G'day guys, Butcher Benny T uh, back here with you again. Uh, in this video I'm going to do a, show you how to break down and cut up a four quarter of beef. Uh, I've got a nice little one here, it's, um, it's a follow on from my hind quarter, so it's the same animal. It's about 130, 140 kilos on the hook, a uh, little whale line Angus, so I'm going to go through all the cuts, get off a four quarter and, and go through it nice and easy and, and show you how I go about it. So. Let's get started. Rightio. So, for a start, I like to take the banjo off, which is the front leg. Um, so, we'll mark him out there. There's your scotch fillet, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do ribeyes out of that. So, grab the knife, um, just cut straight across. You'll run into the um, you run into the shoulder blade in here. So, straight into that until you hit the shoulder blade. Grab your saw. You want to saw through until you feel it go through the bone and stop because you don't want to be sawing through the meat. So, nice and gentle. You'll feel it go. There it goes. Sit the saw away. Through all the way of the knife there. Like that. Then we'll come around and get the bone and knife out. Now, if you've watched the other video on the hind quarter, you'll hear me talk about seams. Uh, we talk about seams. Once again, same, same deal here. About down there, and that and the seam there will start opening up. This leg will just follow the seam down, and it'll just, it'll just come off. There you go. You don't want to. You just want to use the pointy and off, nice and gentle. Once you get to there. The weight of that will just keep it forward. You can just let it do its do its thing. Put a little nick in there. Make a bit of a handle. Straight up on the bench. So that's what we call a banjo. So you've got your shin, um, your shin, your oyster blade, and your bowler blade in here. So we'll bone this out. And um, you'll see me throw. You'll see me throw bits like this, which is just a fat into a bin behind me and any uh, any good mince trim will go under the bench just in front of me I've got a, I've got a tub in there that I'll put all the mince trim in and I'll mince it up later on so here we go take that off righty -o. just trimming these bits of excess fat and meat off the front of him at the moment like that, right oh, yeah. So from here, you want to there's a it's your shoulder blade. So you want to take that take that piece of meat off the top of the blade. Just to open that up so you can see both sides of your shoulder blade. So now you can see there, there, both sides. Trim that up there into the tub. Um, we could take that off and do Osabuco, or you could bone that for gravy beef, or just mince. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bone the whole lot out um, on on this one, and I'll just, I'll just mince it. So we'll go through and, and do that. Pointy knife through the bone, uh, along the bone. So with this, you got the bone that goes there, there, shoulder blade. So you just want the pointy knife. Follow that bone right along. This side, you can take that muscle right out. Just cut it, just cut it off like that. Off. Same on the other side. Follow that bone along. Until you get to his elbow joint. Go down across the top of his elbow there. When you get to that, you only have to just put your knife on top of that joint and that, that will fall, fall away, that bone will fall. Just like that, that was just hardly touched it. Flicking over the edge of the bench, it's easy if you can just hang the, hang the bones over the edge of the bench and that, and it'll just come off. Trim that little bit of meat off there. Not too bad. Don't want to. Don't want to waste any. 
There's that. In the dog bone tub. Right, uh, we'll trim this up. I like to put this in. This has got the same as what I had in the hind quarter because I've only just done the hind quarter earlier. So I'll normally put this shin stuff in just to, just to lean it up that little bit more. The mint. But like I say, if you want to cut that, that's perfectly fine stew and steak. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to mince it. Just take that tendon off the end there. A little bit of fat there. A bit of fat there. Trim that up into the tub. Right out. Now we can work on getting this other bone out of here. So, say it again, point on the knife. Just along there. Piece of meat across the top here, we'll take that off. Just keep following your knife around the back. Like I've said in other, in other videos, you stick to the bone, you can't really go too wrong. There's no, there's no rush to get it done, you just take your time. head on the hook. I've always done, I've done a lot of my boning on the bench, this sort of stuff, so that's how I do it. Oh yeah, so now, just with the point of your knife again, you just want to go either side of that shoulder blade, like that. You can see what I've done there. Then we've got the roll of the blade on this side, that there, and your oyster blades under the shoulder blade, so just peel this bit of fat off at the top there. You can just sort of, you're going to see the top of your shoulder blade with a bit of a ridge on it. Run your knife along that, go hard down onto the bottom of the shoulder blade, like that. That muscle will just pull off the bone. There it is. Um, that's good stew and steak. You can use it as a little roast. Uh, I normally cut it up and put it in with my oyster blade. Have it as a stew and steak, so I'll do that with it. I'll cut that in there actually. While we're going. I'll just cut it into pieces. All my stewing steak, casserole steak, I leave in pieces because I slow cook it. It falls apart, so there's that. Other side of that top um, bone on the blade, through there. And if we just open this up here a little bit, just nick your knife in there, this bone should just peel off the shoulder blade. Like that. There it is. Beautiful. A little bit of meat in there. Pretty good. Right, yeah. so now all we're left with is our bowl of blade and our oyster blade. So, we want to take our oyster blade off. The muscles there, I like to come into the into the bowl of blade a little bit, mainly because if you're if you're going to sell this um, in a shop or whatever, take it off. You've got a good face. There, than rather than if you follow the seam, there's, it's a pretty ordinary face on it. So I, I cut it off there, so it's got a good face. So if you're displaying it or whatever, you've, you've got that. But um, if you're only doing it for yourself, it, it really doesn't matter. So trim that off there. You can leave the fat on top of your oyster blade if you want. I take it off. You just run your, run your knife along that. It'll just come off easy. That. Flip it around. We'll cut that first piece off because there's a piece of tendon in there, so we don't want that. Trim that off. 
Then we'll just slice the rest out. That's our oyster blade. There'll be a little bit more, because we've cut through the shoulder blade, there's a little bit more of the oyster blade up in there on top of the scotch on that top cap, so we'll get that after and put that with it. Um, and we're now onto our blade. Um, you could cut this into steaks, but I'm going to keep it as a roast. Um, your bowl of blade is pretty much the best roast on the animal, I, I think anyway. So, um, as all the meats are on the shoulder, I think they're better cuts, they're more flavoursome. So, especially that slow cooking sort of stuff. Trim it up a bit, leave it that on. That's the blade roast. Right, yeah. What we'll do now, we'll take the we'll take the brisket off. And to do that, we'll take this bit of brass hanger steak, or I call it body skirt. We'll take that out first. So that's just a matter of depending on what hand you are, I'm a right hander, so I've got to go backwards with the knife. We'll take that out. Made up on there, we'll take it out. Okay, I'll just trim this up. This is a, it is a nice braising steak. Um, if you could use it, that's what you're doing, but um, I'm going to mince it. So, but I'll still show you how I like trim it out if I want to keep it to braise. Now this bit of skin on it, this will just peel off. That's right. It's already fallen apart, you can see that. There it is. I'll put that straight in the mix. Right oh, yeah. Now, yeah. take that off there. Take that little piece out of there. Just a bit of rubbish. Now, yeah. I, right. once again, you can do this on the hook. I'm going to get it onto the bench. There's a join in the, um, there's a join where the rib joins the brisket here, which you can run down in these younger cattle. Older cattle is a bit harder, but Younger cattle, you can just run down with your knife. So I'll show you how to do that. Put the knife in there. That knife will go straight through there. There it is, that's off. Brisket's on this side. So we can start going about getting that, getting that done. Just trim this little bit of meat out from the inside here. Not much, but it's still, still worth getting out. Just run my knife along the back here. Only, probably only 10 mil in of the point of the knife, just going along that back there of your brisket. Now I'll sit him up and start going. Pretty much, you're pretty much right along the bone here, but there's a bit of a seam in here that'll open up as well when you start doing it, it'll just come away. Then you'll meet back up with that other cut I'll get down the bottom. So here's your brisket off. There's the bone. Okay. I'll take that end off the brisket there. That's where I stuck stuck him after I shot him, so we'll get that out of there. that up like so square this other end up just so it looks nice and neat pretty much trim this piece up In there. 
trim that bit of hard at that and I've got a bit of, um, you can see there, I've got a little bit of cartilage off the brisket bone so I'll just take that little bit of cartilage off. But I like to, um, I pretty much like to leave all the fat I can on these because you're slow cooking it, you want the moisture to stay in it and that's what makes the flavour and, and keeps it tender. So take that little bit of heavier stuff right off the bottom of the brisket. A little bit of hair on there, but I'd keep it just like that. Could cut it in half, we will cut it in half. That way it's easier to cook, but there's your brisket. Right there. Right there. Now we want to take off, I'm going to do, I'll, I'll do some short ribs, but I'll do rib eyes, then you've got your chuck or your casserole there. So run a knife down, you want to keep it all, all square, with this edge for your ribeyes. So if I work, depends on how long you want the tail on your ribeyes, but and how many short ribs you want to get. But I'll go down about there. And out the bottom there. So that's where our short ribs are, that's our ribeyes, and that's our um that's our chuck casserole which I'll take that out first now because I'll get this off in a minute and, and run that straight through the saw. So to get that off, I'm going to run down the back of this bizarre spine here. Take it down there like that. I'll bring the knife around and get this little bit of meat from the inside here. Just work that. It's a bit hard to see from your angle, but there's a bit of meat in there, so we'll run that out. Now this neck is probably one of the trickiest, probably one of the trickiest parts to bone out on the on the beast because there's not, there are no seams, and the neck bone's pretty pretty rough. And there's ins and outs and that, but um, if you leave meat on them, which I'll probably leave a bit of meat on it. Um, because I'll cut those neck bones for soup. So I've done that to have a little bit on them. Oh yeah. As you get in there, just pull down on it a bit as you go. It just if you pull them down on it, it just opens it up. I'll come down this way. Pull down on it and it opens it up a bit. And you can see exactly where you're going. You follow the bone the best, but um, like I said, if you're going to have soup bones, you want some meat on them, so that's pretty good. So we'll trim this up. You could keep this as a, as a um, slow roasting piece, which is bloody beautiful for that. Um, we're coming into winter here where I am, so we do plenty of stews and casseroles and that, so I'll just cut it into, into casserole steaks and go that way. But you could you could have it as a slow roasting um, piece. Oh yeah, okay. there's a cat muscle on here as well, which once again, it's a seam. Start pulling it back from there. Just pull it as you go, just knife, pull. And the seam will show you the way. You can't. I'll, I'll keep saying. I'll keep saying it, but you can't go wrong if you're following the seams or the bones. If you're on the right ones, I'll so we'll get that off. Trim that up a bit. So you can cut that in half or have it as a full roast. Be good in a, it'd be good in a bloody smoker or anything, anything slow cooking, that'd be beautiful. But, um, we love our casseroles, that's what I'm doing. Trim this bit up. What's that? When I'm doing the um, trim, I always do at least a side. So I'll do a hind quarter and a fore quarter and mix both tubs together for the mince. Just to even to that because you tend to get a bit more, you get a bit more fattier stuff off one or the other. So if you even it out, 
Um, end up with a pretty good mix. Right, yeah. So I'll just slice this out. Now, when I when I cook this, I'll just cook it in a piece like that. So when it falls apart, um, you could dice it up if you wanted to, but really, if you're slow cooking, you don't have to dice it because it, it falls apart if you're cooking it right. So I'll just slice that. That. A little bit of dry stuff there, we'll just take that off. That can go in there, that's our chuck stack. Down that goes. Righty eh. So we've got our soup bones on there still. So if we spin them around. Where the, the last vertebrae before it hits ribs, you'll get your knife through that. So you go through that. Right in there. That will just come away. So we'll slice it into soup bones in a minute. While we're doing it, I'll take this whole thing down, I'll run that through the saw as well. So just bear with me, this, this old saw is pretty noisy, but I'll quickly zip these through. again, make it a bit shorter. There we go. So with these, take that off there where that joins into the, towards the neck. Now there's a bit of skin, a bit of skin on the underside of these ribs. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky, sometimes it will come off nice and easy. You want to get that off. And of course it's gonna it's gonna prove to be bloody a bit tricky here. These aren't because he's not an overly fat animal. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that fat and that on then, and I'll cut them into twos like that. There they are. Beautiful. Trim this one out. Right in the up. There we go. Now we'll sort these ones out. Do the same here, we'll take that off there. Trim this piece up. Right, 
this is all the boring stuff. Trimming, trimming the fat off, and that it all takes time, but you've sort of got to do it. So you do enough of it, it's good for knife skills, all the same. And then. See if the skin wants to come off this side. Starting up on this one and see how we go. There it goes. We'll pick up here. Twos again. So I'm going to take this last one off. And there's a hook stain in there where I had it hanging. So I'll take that last one off and trim that out. But you can see those, even for a small animal, they're still a meaty, meaty rib. Sit those there. Trim that one out. Get rid of that hook stain there. There. That one in the mince, that one in the dog bones, that one in there. Right, yeah. Okay. Now we've got, we'll get our um, ribeyes here, and there'll be a little little bit of uh, oyster blade you can see in there. Yeah, oyster blades up the top there, there's the rest of that shoulder blade. So that'll come out when we take that front cap muscle out. Trim, there's a little bit of trim in here. Right, so what we want to do, I'll take that bit of bone off the end there, then we want to take this chine bone off. This is just like doing, if you've done lamb, it's just like a big lamb cutlet. We want to bring the knot, we want to run the saw on about that angle through there and take that, that piece of chine bone off. So I'll quickly do that. come off there so now all I've got is that, <coughs> the, that bit of spine up the top there which I'll be able to cut, cut, take that off with a knife now tuck that bone in there that bone can go in there too and so we'll take these off keep your knife hard up against them there we go they're off Then what you want to do, we've got this paddy whack in here, which paddy whack, it's a yellow, uh, it's sort of a, it's a rubbery bit of stuff um, that runs along his whole back. So just work that off with your fingers. You don't want to go hacking in there with your knife because that's your scotch fillet, uh, the eye of the muscle. You don't want to cut that to pieces. So just gently pull that away. You can see it's just, that's once again, just a seam. Pull that away, get it about there, then we'll get our knife and we'll cut it. You, you'll see a bit of fat, we'll cut across the top of that and we'll try and leave that on the stakes. Like that. Now it looks something that looks a little bit like that. Probably cut them a little bit short at one end these handles, but that won't matter. Take these, you could leave these little bits of fingers in here, but I'll take them out.
that. So chuck those into the mix. Laying over there. A little bit of crap there. Probably should have done this before I did the, um, took those fingers out, but same as on the ribs, that bit of, that bit of bloody skin that's under there, you've got to peel that off the back side of this as well. There it goes. Take that bone up. Right here. Yeah. I'm just going to face this first one up. So to face it up, you can see it's a bit dry on the edge. So I'll put a bit of pressure on it. Squeeze it out a bit. You just want to take that. It's only a real little bit, but take that off. Then we can go about cutting our stacks. No bone, just a handle. That there is a ribeye. Beautiful. I'll chuck them down there. Then all that's left is this top cap. Um, if you're going to do rolled beef, you could put bits and pieces in there, like that roll of the blade that I took off, you could put that in there, and some of the other bits of brisket and that and roll it up, but I'll just trim it out. Um, not many people do rolled beef now. It's all, it's all bloody minced or slow cooked in a piece. So just trim all this bottom fat off here for a start. That's all right. And you want to be on the bottom side of this blade bone. That's very. Just work it off there, just keep your knife on the on that shoulder blade. There we go, you can see it's opened up. There's the shoulder blade. I'll take this piece off now. That can go straight into the mince. There. Once again, this is a seam. Do that with your knife. And it's coming away already. You can see that. There it comes. That's off. That's the piece you'd use to roll, which you'd also cut it a bit longer too. Um, but I did it shorter, so my ribs were shorter than the ribeyes. But that's what you'd roll. You can see that's the best piece of the oyster blade, the shell oyster. So we'll take that out. We'll put that with the rest. That's just an matter of that side. That comes, bone, slice that, there's not much in it, there's only another what, two, three pieces, but they are the best piece, so we'll chuck them there. Trim this up. Sharp knife makes it a lot easier, so keep your knives sharp. That one. Get off there. If you're making sausages with this trim, you'd, just, you'd probably throw that fat all in because um, you obviously want your sausages a bit fatter. But um, I'm trimming it up for a beef mince. Righto, just give us a sec. I'll weigh out what we've just cut, we'll go over it. Um, Rightio, so here's what we've just done. Um, so for a start, we took out our oyster blade. There it is there, we did that roll of the blade as well. We cut that in the oyster blade. Then we moved on to our bowl of blade roast. There it is there. Our brisket, we cut them into two smaller pieces. 
Then we did our chuck. You can see the, the trim and the bones under the bench there as well. But, uh, then we did the chuck. There it is there. We did a few soup bones. Plenty of meat left on them because that's what you want um, when you're cooking a soup. Then our short ribs. Plenty of meat on those. Bloody beautiful. And then we did our rib eyes. And there they are there. All in all, a pretty good looking lot of beef. Righto guys, so there we have it. Um, that's how I go about cutting up um, four quarter of beef. Um, obviously there's, there's plenty of ways different people do it. That's my way, that's why I took, uh, that's why I was taught. That's how I've done it for over 20 years, 25 years. Um, works for me. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to change. Um, hopefully you've picked something up from this video and my previous videos. Um, thanks for watching. It, um, it's been a while since I've done done a video since the one before. Um, so thanks for coming back. Thanks for watching. Um, please uh, like like the video, share it, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and keep an eye out for more videos to come. Cheers, guys.